So it's taken about three years or so for some people to finally start seeing what I've been seeing the whole time about this particular basketball player by the name of Carl Towns and how overrated he is and how he's basically fool's gold. NBA fool's gold. He's a product. He is a player they want you to root for. He's a player they're rooting for to do well is, is also. And in a minute or two, I'll show you a video that I made about a little over a year and a half ago about, you know, just some some of the reasons why I won't get too much into that the recent thing so and my prediction also I'll, I'll, let me give you uh, let me give you that now I predict a decent if not a big game three from Carl Towns at home against the Houston Rockets who he should be having good games against because a team like the Houston Rockets though they're improved defensively Everyone has big games when they play the Houston Rockets, it's statistically. And, and though in recent interview as of last night, Carl Towns claims that he's not about gaudy numbers and statistics, that couldn't be further from the truth. That is all he's about. He is all about making a max contract next year. His coach and teammates... You can see it on their faces, whether it's this year or the last two games or the or the last the previous years. They know that this guy is limited and he's not that good. Statistics can be very misleading, and he is someone that the like I mentioned that the NBA wants. They want him to do well. They want him to be a superstar. The game is changing in the way in that way too. You know, going away from players that are the opposite of him and wanting more uh, quote-unquote skilled players, basically big guys who could shoot the ball and run the floor and are athletic. Well, he shoots the ball well, though he does ha actually does have limitations with how he shoots the ball, believe it or not. He has to, most of the time, he has to be wide open in order to make shots consistently. He can't shoot on the move he has to be just in that very limited uh position that he's in and he there's literally nothing to his shot but mostly just wrist it's a he has actually moved his uh, release point up over the last uh you know he fixed that it was a lot lower when he was a rookie and uh, coming into the league and he has proven to make open three-pointers and he has been, he's also proven to release his shot quickly enough. But with all those things considered, he is still very limited offensively, just like Charles Barkley said. And people just literally cannot understand that at this point still because they think he is still, they still think Carl Towns is an offensive juggernaut. And he is actually very limited when he is down in the low post he depends on mismatches and this was the other argument after game one against the rockets that he had mismatches and they wouldn't go to him but the thing is the the, the wolves players and the wolves coaches especially jeff teague and, and tom thibodeau and uh, jimmy butler to an extent too they know when he's doesn't have it going and they also know from playing with him that he's not actually as good as he is touted he's highly highly touted actually as far as among uh, NBA circles go of fans and everything if you look on uh, just go on YouTube and uh, look up Carl Towns and you'll see the hype you know uh, they, the NBA has the ability to raise you up even if you're not that is talented they could they could present you because like I said he's a product and they're selling him as a product for whatever reason I have my own theories but I'm not gonna get into that at, the, at this moment but they also have the ability to drag you down and throw you out if they wanted to Towns is a tool he's a good yes man he does what you know he says the right things and does the right things he was also in the right situation and I think going to Kentucky and being one of Calipari's uh, guys, you know, he uh, 
there is a there is a system that happens. You know, he was taught how to be an NBA player before even getting to the NBA, and probably even promised to be a high draft pick. And I wouldn't even be surprised if Calipari is taking some kickback from when uh, Towns got that number one pick uh, um, contract because the number one pick makes a whole lot more money and the scale g drops down based on pick to pick. He's also going to still, even after these two uh, abysmal uh, playoff games that he's had, um, he might still make a max contract for where he's at in his career um, after his rookie, you know, rookie contract will get extended into a max, a max deal and he'll be making way too much money and like I mentioned the, the NBA could do the opposite to you and this is what they've done to Jaleel Okafor Jaleel Okafor pissed a few people off apparently you know he, he got put in the worst situation he got drafted to a team who had already drafted their set their cornerstone center and they already had other big players as well like Nerlens Noel was still a young player there and they had drafted Joel Embiid like I mentioned to be their cornerstone center and also 76ers were literally in a year to year tanking mode to where they didn't really care it's paying off for them now but Jaleel Okafor was never part of the really part of the plan he was just the best player available and he pissed them off too apparently you know as, as far as we've seen so there's two sides to things the nba isn't just a is is not a fair thing you know and statistics are not always what to look for and this is what unfortunately there's a lot of people who watch hoops who do not actually know hoops that well at all and all they can do is analyze statistics and some of these people are even in the in the media uh reporters uh people who other a lot of other people listen to and guess what all those people who listen to these people who don't know what they're talking about all they do all they're just repeaters anyone who sticks up for carl towns as far as him being the next greatest uh, one of the next greatest players of all time, which gets talked about an awful lot, if you can believe that. They just repeat pretty much what everyone, what they've heard. And that's a product of this country in general. You know, we're a bunch of, well, not we, most of us here are a bunch of repeaters. We learned it from a young age. We started going to school and started repeating and became the parrots of society and then we went to work and did what we were told because we had already been doing the things without question or, or questioning anything or being even hesitant to not do them and we start working day in day out five six days a week 40 50 hours a week not questioning it at all not questioning anything you know you go to college and still repeat the same stuff and we let, what, what do they do after that? You know, when there are a lot of people who are done with the work week, they sit at home and watch TV, watch sports and stuff, and they repeat what they hear again. It's just a, no one in this country especially knows how to think for themselves or analyze things or think outside the box as far as just about anything goes. And <laughs> I've unfortunately had to deal with that with a lot of, a lot of things and even as things as dumb as this, things as dumb as sports, professional sports, you know, when I my track record has been, you know, other than this guy, because he's actually put up some great statistical seasons numbers and everything, you know, in the last few seasons and done very well, you know, as far as that goes, but the team hasn't made the playoffs. So now finally the teams have a chance to prepare properly for him to scout him well and see the, all his weaknesses that I saw that were glaring to me from the start when you start looking in and in, in figuring things out on your own um, you're going to see things a lot differently so this is a video from uh, it was from a year and a half ago it wasn't very well made or anything but kind of lays out some of the uh, details of of why i think that towns is a great very overrated player there's a ton of things that i didn't even mention in this video so keep that in mind as well though i think it covers a lot but i've talked enough for now
Um, what I want to start with is physically his body is not made to play in the NBA. Um, he's lucky that he's playing in this era, this generation of the NBA where it's not as physical. He has a very disproportionate, unproportionate, imbalanced body. He has so many weak areas and those compared to his strong areas make him a very off-balanced, very, very susceptible to flailing and losing, being out of control and falling and just not having much balance. And he, does, he cannot jump very well off one leg. He is, as you see in this picture, that is a legitimate hunch in the middle of his back. That is not good when you're trying to play the power forward and center position in the NBA when you're playing down low. That is not going to cut it. He, and it shows all the time, this, this goes along with his weak back, other, his weak lower back, his very weak hips. When he pulls up his shirt, he's got a pudgy, pudgy stomach, which is kind of odd for a guy that's uh, built like this, and very weak legs. He cannot jump off one leg like I mentioned. He gets no elevation. And this is not a good formula. He gets pushed around by bigger players easier. He has, abs and when it comes to leverage battles, he just gets easily moved and shoved out of the way. He has absolutely no leverage. Players will be, be figuring this out. Other players who already know, know that and play that way already do this to him as we'll see in some some clips here's our first example right here against the Miami Heat um, okay he's playing against Hassan Whiteside and we'll go from here and explain let's uh, see that again so Carl Towns is very, very robotic. He practices and does the same things. He will always do a pump fake, and we'll see that on another play that I'll be showing you. He does not need to. Um, in this case, it actually somewhat works, but like I said, he does it. He also does this too early. He goes too soon, letting White's, uh, leaving Whiteside to be able to cover the ground to make up and still guard him. For some reason, Carl Towns still can't get around him, though, or get the ball up or elevate to the hoop. We'll watch again. As you see, he got the step around him and still could not finish, still got blocked, and of course fell over on the ground like he was. He falls over a lot. Putting up statistics and being a good player are totally different things. They don't always go hand in hand. And as you'll see, um, if you more and more you watch this guy, the more you'll see that. So here's another play. He's playing against Jaleel Okafor, who, if, you, if people who like Carl Towns, they don't like Jaleel Okafor because these two are compared a lot. And they're very different players, but Jaleel Okafor is a one-of-a-kind player. He has the best post game that we have anyone has ever seen in the history of basketball and he is he was 19 years old last year he's going he's going to be 20 or he is 20 now and that is just unheard of the the things that people say that have that the negative things that people have to say about him are thing are very very minuscule things that are just going to solve themselves and remedy themselves in time. Carl Towns got put into the best situation while Jaleel Okafor got put in the worst situation. That is the biggest difference and these guys being rookies on both bad teams the statistics aren't gonna tell all the story. There's many factors that go into the statistics but overall when you watch the players and you just watch their game Jaleel Okafor is the superior player. So Carl Towns right here catches the ball in the low post, isolated right here, and Towns fans will tell you that Jaleel Okafor is trash on defense, which is not true. He could play defense, he has the tools, he has the physical tools. Towns seems like he's just trying to be a basketball player. It's not as natural for him as it is for Okafor. And we'll watch this. Right, triple drag action. And dives Carl Anthony Towns into the post. Nice so, 
absolutely no elevation once again. Oh, Towns has got some big ass pads on his leg. I never knew that. I never noticed that before. Like I said, he's got very weak legs. I mean, these guys wear these pads all the time and everything. So in this play, Okafor doesn't even need to jump. This this ball is just up for grabs. He he blocks it with two hands actually. Blocked by Okafor. You can't see it, but his feet haven't even left the ground. Carl Towns' his feet have left the ground, but he just doesn't have. He's just not that explosive. He doesn't have, especially in these kind of scenarios where he's making moves. He's when he's not in the open court or anything. He just has no balance, no explosiveness off one leg or off two legs, especially turning around or anything. And two-handed block to any. Towns, who's supposed to be, you know, people actually call him a great low post defender, even this early in his career, and that is beyond wrong. That is beyond incorrect. He's Towns is actually a decent perimeter defender against positions against guys that are smaller than him. He's, you know, he he presents some problems that way, but he is pretty bad overall. As far as low post defense, so much anymore. Yeah, he's faced up. You saw right there, um, Jaleel Okafor toying. You know, he he basically he uses the ball very well to get a defender to lean one way or the other to create an advantage and make separation. He does not need much. He could score the ball at will. Um, he holds the ball like a grapefruit and. The move he makes right here, Towns does not react quick enough. Goes around him right there. Towns is still in good position, but as you'll see, play all season long. Okafor off the dribble got Towns leaning the wrong way. Okafor just three off. The that was just straight embarrassing. Playing high pick and roll. Julio Okafor, looks like they'll probably switch back. Oh yeah, here's where uh, he'll pump fake for no reason. So, the double team, they leave Towns open. He gets the ball on the top of the key. Realistically, he, he's wide open and he should shoot it. Especially for a guy like Towns who's supposed to be a good shooter. Which he isn't too bad, actually. He he's very streaky. He'll if he's making them, he'll keep making them. It's a, he shoots the low release, all wrist. He does not even jump, which is, and so this this is a formula for very streaky shooting. There he'll have nights where he can't hit anything. He's uh, proven himself to be a decent shooter, but I guarantee you, over a long period of time, it's not going to be as effective as it should be. What you'll see right here, though is he does this complete unnecessary pump fake and he does the same pretty much stupid move that he does because he has only a few moves he goes to whether he's down low or face up right here and here we go Kiss trailing the play able to get it up and in towns denied by Okafor who was able he to didn't have the presence of mind to even switch hands or go a different way, he just does what he, you know, what he's been practicing and taught, and doesn't even recognize or realize that the right side of the hoop, going to the right side of the hoop, is not open. But that's the that's where he intended to go the entire time, and that just got him into big trouble and got him blocked and embarrassed. Trailing the play, able to get it up and in. Towns denied by Okafor, who was able. Tried to go an up and under, but Okafor reacts. Okafor doesn't, you know, that that's a the up wasn't the up part of the up and under wasn't good enough to to get a fake, you know, to be able to open up the right side. Okay, in this in this play, Hassan Whiteside for the Heat. This shows an example of how easy it is to out leverage Carl Towns. Basically, uh, Whiteside will get the ball way too deep underneath the basket. Um, he won't. He'll be like out of out of. He'll be too far underneath to where he needs to back back in. He needs to go back in and basically back out towns, and he does that way too easily. 
because, like I said, is when it comes to the leverage game, um, Towns loses every time, especially with the, against these type of players. That's a great matchup for him. Boss giving it up for white side underneath. Boss giving it up for white side underneath. Boss giving it up for white side underneath. It's not stopping Hassan Whiteside from getting hoop, hoops at the rim, is he it? Got, he got moved out of the way like a rag doll. Why he's actually not that good, though people think he's just, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Okay, all right right here. Now he should have, he should have stayed faced up. He shouldn't have started his dribble. He should have kept his live dribble and, and, and faced up white side, especially since he should be able to go around him. But he's probably, he's probably you know, it's the third quarter now, and he's probably learned his lesson and scared of white side. He thinks he's going to, what he thinks he's going to do right here is his typical um, over the left shoulder uh, push slash hook shot. It's not more. It's not much of a hook shot. It's more of just a push shot. He usually gets this off versus most people. It it looks very pedestrian. It's not very. There's not much talent to it at all. It's not that great of a move. Every big guy has got a move like this, but. In this case, it, it, it just completely backfires, even though he's just trying to do a simple move. Hassan Whiteside's too good of a defender, pushes him out too far, and as you'll see, he just nothing happens for Towns right here. He, he just it looks really bad. Starting for them, and Tony, and that's enabled them to take. Oh, Whiteside with his seventh block shot of the game, and Tony, how many have come? Smack my bitch up. Smack my bitch up! Smack my bitch up! Um, you will see how Towns can easily be out of control, and this happens often because he's got just basically horrible balance from having an imbalanced body, like proportionately built kind of funny. No offense to him personally, but you know, when somebody's being touted as the next great player, and you know it's obvious the, that it's not going to happen then you got to prove them wrong you know, so here's an example of how out of control he can be if he gets nudged the wrong way which happens often and this is why this is exactly why he falls down so easily because it's easy to knock someone down that's built you know, not incorrectly. Their body is when their body's not proportionately stable in the right way, especially for a sport like basketball in particular, they're gonna fall down in these type of situations a lot. Watch, it doesn't take much. It's out of control. And they've already played once, so Towns knows he's in trouble. Towns tries to body up too much and watch what happens. 